Today, my guest is Steve Cha. I wanted to stop being so selfish, and I wanted to go into Hollywood and to promote the cause of the gospel and work for the kingdom of God. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today my guest is Steve Cha. Now Steve has an interesting history. He went to Hollywood in order to evangelize, is that correct? That is correct. Okay, well why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your book, Hollywood Mission Possible. Yes, the book is called Hollywood Mission Possible and it is an autobiography of a uh, little bit about the early part of my life, but mostly my ministry work in Hollywood evangelizing famous actors and actresses. Now how I got to this point is actually a very interesting story. Growing up I wanted to enter into Hollywood to make it big and to make it famous and everything. Just like all the other dreamers in town since it's in my backyard, I wanted to actually go in pursuing film directing and be like the next uh, Steven Spielberg or mm -hmm. Clint Eastwood, Martin Scorsese, like really acclaimed uh, filmmaker in cinema and I decided to go into Hollywood as a background actor in the summer of 2007 so I can get my foot into the door mm -hmm. and to possibly even establish connections get to meet people just to see how the environment is like and then in the fall or September of 2007 I was on set of a TV show and I met a Christian on set his name is Jonathan and he went around just preaching the gospel to everybody all around the set. And I was so shocked because growing up, I have never seen anything like that in my life. Like the spiritual world and the professional world, Christendom and Hollywood coming together. I mean, could it really be? <laughs> so I went up to him and just was talking to him and he just told me about how he got saved and how God was using him in the entertainment industry to bring spiritual light to bring the gospel to those who aren't saved and he even told me incredible stories about how he shared the gospel with celebrities like Steven Spielberg, Harrison Ford, uh, Robert Downey Jr., Michael Douglas, Sylvester Stallone, Jackie Chan, Orlando Bloom. It's a really huge list. Wow. That's right. That's what I said. I was <laughs> like, wow. And I wanted to actually even do what he did. So I asked him, how can I um, get started in this? So he gave me some resources, which were from uh, the Living Waters Ministry, which is run by Ray Comfort. And he has a TV yes. show with Kirk Cameron called The Way of the Master. And after I saw this material, watched it, read the tracks, I saw the gospel message in its purest form in a way that I've never known before. It really moved me. And I actually did a 180 in my life. And I just decided that I wanted to stop being so selfish and I wanted to go into Hollywood and to promote the cause of the gospel and work for the kingdom of God because I also had a strong conviction that after doing some research that we are living in the last days before Jesus is returning, I'm thinking, what does my life really matter anymore chasing after all this fame and money? I mean, I gotta, got, I gotta go out there and start telling people about Christ and to reconcile them onto him mm -hmm. before it's too late, before we all end up getting judged and end up in hell forever. Mm -hmm. So I started to go out, evangelize, and eventually reached all these celebrities myself in the next um, two to three years. And that included like Tori Spelling, Kiefer Sutherland, uh, Freddie Prince Jr., Brad Pitt, and a lot of other names myself. Wow. Well, who, what, what kind of, um, response did you get from some of these actors? Ooh, that's a <laughs> that's a interesting question. Some of them were very positive. Some felt that I was kind of helpful to them, at least to their uh, everyday life just for their own uh, psychological benefit. And some were indifferent and some were quite hostile. And I knew this because of one incident, so afterwards when the shoe wrapped, I went up to him. I knew he wanted to go home because it was such a lo long work day. So I just thanked him for a wonderful day and I gave him a gospel tract. It was one of the million dollar bills from the Living Waters Ministry. And so he thanked me for that and then he left. And I thought everything was great. And then about 10 days later, I get a letter from 
my casting agency, Central Casting, stating that I got fired and they terminated me and they didn't even give me a reason why, even though I called them, emailed them, went down to their office, but nobody said anything. But I knew it was because of that incident that I got blacklisted from Hollywood. And that's what you can expect if you share your faith in Hollywood or even out in the world that many times. Mm -hmm. There was also another time when I evangelized David Fincher, the director of Social Network, when mm -hmm. I was working on the movie. And we talked, and he was actually a very cool guy. We actually had talked for a while, and then I gave him a Greatest Gamble DVD, mm -hmm. which is one of the Living Waters resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought everything was pretty cool. And then about a week or two later, I get a call from Screen Actors Guild, and they said this is regarding social network. And at the time, I was out of town, and I just got the message. So when I came back, I checked the message. And then I called them back. I said, okay, what is this about? And they said, oh, we can't remember what this is about, so just be at peace. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to complain. Okay. <laughs> Were you ever warned to keep your religion to yourself? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's quite a few times on set when I was warned. And I remember this one time when I was working on Shark, which is a TV show that is now canceled, starring James Woods. During one of the downtime at the catering room, I went up to James. I was talking to him about one of his old movies called uh, Once Upon a Time in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you probably know that, but a lot of the younger generations probably will not know that movie. Anyways, I went up to him, and I gave him a, one of those, these gospel tracks. It's called Are You a Good Person from Living Waters also. Mm -hmm. And he took it. He had to go back to the dressing room to change. And then a the PA took me aside, a production assistant, and he just started berating me in a corner, saying, like, you can't do this. You can't be talking to him and spreading your religion like that. And he almost fired me that day. But by the grace of God, I was able to stay and, of course, get my pay. So it's, it's a dangerous place to be a Christian in some ways than just kind of like being on the mission field. So, yeah, some ways, yeah. I, I mean, because you, you could lose your job. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, they may not kill you physically, I, I hope not, but they'll, <laughs> they'll definitely kill you professionally. Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Take away your, your living. Correct, yeah. Yeah. So even though it's it's not, you know, giving your, your life physically, it is to a certain extent of giving up your life when you decide to evangelize in Hollywood. Yeah. At least parts of your life. Exactly. Just like Christ says, whoever loses his life for my sake will mm -hmm. find it. and. You don't know it any more than when you're in Hollywood, just really trying to do it in there. Hollywood is actually very antagonistic towards the gospel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, not so much towards other religions, but all the time towards Christ and the gospel. Yeah, yeah well, that, that seems a bit obvious to me by what they produce and the way they represent like pastors and, and believers in movies and on television. Have you noticed that too? Yeah, yeah. The way that they represent them is very, they have a stereotypical image of them being these holier than thou, cultish people who just go, go around and are just party poopers so that, you know, kind of like police agents morally and even then people disagree on the moral issues. But absolutely, this is one of the reasons why it's so hard for the gospel to get across in Hollywood because they're just seen as this thing to frighten people about the issue of hell it's like you're going to hell type of thing but mm -hmm. people just don't want to hear that even though maybe some of them know it's true <laughs> yeah and another thing i see is they they represent pastors often as very weak or morally corrupt and things like that and and believers as um, compromising all the time that's the kind of thing i've seen in shows and I'm thinking, you really don't know us at all. And isn't that tragic? That yeah. We, they don't know who we really are. And I think it's great that you were trying to help them <laughs> understand. Have you ever cowered in sharing your faith? I guess I would be lying if I said that I didn't. Actually, there were times when I did cower in trying to get the gospel message across and it has cost me some opportunities with celebrities like um, Chevy Chase and Drew Barrymore, Adam Sandler. 
But in those moments, I really have to pray to the Lord to really help me conquer my fear, to conquer the monster that's always causing me to stop. Mm -hmm. And then I would muster the strength with the Holy Spirit's help, with God mm -hmm. the Spirit, and He would lead me to step out of my comfort zone so that I can go whenever I have the opportunity to speak to these celebrities. If not speak to them, at least give them like some resource like a DVD or tract and pray that the Lord would use the materials to convict them. And that's one of the uh, ways that I share my life as a testimony to also help other Christ Christians conquer their fears when it comes to evangelizing the lost. And how do you, how do you help other Christians with that? Well, aside from the story, mm -hmm. which just shows them that there's really nothing, nothing too much to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. And it really takes a lot of practice. I mean, of course, you need some practice to be good at evangelism, but eventually you're just going to have to conquer your fears. That's the most work in the area. All you have to do is just jump into the water and then everything just warms up from there. And that's like Peter getting out of the boat. Something like yeah. that, yeah. yeah. Keep your eyes on Christ and, and His power, and yeah, yeah, and then and also leave the results to Him because you know Absolutely. some of us plant seeds, some water. We don't necessarily have to see the harvest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It would be good if we can see the harvest, but um, I'm just telling you based on experience that's not going to be the case most of the time. And if you're yeah. thinking that will be, then you will be disappointed for the most part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What words of encouragement can you give to other Christians who are either working in Hollywood now or wanting to work in Hollywood? I mean, how can you encourage them, especially not to compromise? Well, I would first say that if you want to enter into Hollywood and you feel that that is where the Lord is calling you to go, then you should definitely go. If you have the talent to do it, then by all means go do it. But the issue here is compromising your faith which happens so much with professing Christians and sometimes people backslide altogether revealing their true colors mm -hmm. and the best thing to do when you're there is just to remember what Christ said in this in scripture remember the importance of the Great Commission to be salt and light in whatever profession you may be in and that includes Hollywood to find creative ways to find good opportunities to share the gospel even with famous celebrities and not to be afraid, of course, because if you're willing to step up and to conquer your fears and to deny yourself, like Scripture says, then God will lead you to do mm -hmm. amazing things. And I even want to encourage the viewers out there that if you're planning to go into Hollywood, that you will definitely be bold. And even though you may not do it exactly the way I did it, which some people may consider to be somewhat extreme, but even in those moments, you can, um, in those little quiet moments, if you're still able to make some friendships or relationships with people, to just boldly share the gospel message with them because souls are at stake and we have, to import, we have to remember how important that is and just let God take care of the results and just pray and pray and pray for this industry. Yeah, eternity is a long time. Yes. And the Great Commission is for everyone. God is not willing for anyone to perish. So what are you doing now? Right now, other than the fact that I'm trying to encourage people to share their faith, maybe not necessarily in Hollywood, but I always go around and speak at events mm -hmm. and churches to teach people how to evangelize, to inspire them, maybe even to run training courses for everyday life, whether it's to family members, to strangers, to people in the workplace, maybe global missions. Mm -hmm. And I'm also attending a master seminary as a seminary student to eventually become a pastor within uh, God willing two to three years. That's wonderful. Well, where can people find you online? Well, they can find me at www.stevecha.net. Once again, that's stevecha.net. And Cha is C-H-A. C-H-A, S-T-E-V-E, C-H-A.net. And there's the book, Hollywood the Mission Possible. What's the subtitle? Piercing the Darkness of a Decadent Industry, which is available in both paperback and ebook, Kindle and Nook. And you can get this at winepressbooks.com. Or if you're more of a phone person, you can call toll free at 1 877 421 7323. It's been featured on CNN and the Christian Post and Korea Times and just so many news outlets. And that's great. A lot of wonderful stories and even a great discussion guide in the back for small groups and church curriculums, ideal for everybody.
Okay. Well, thank you so much for being my guest. Thank you so much, Jean. Okay. And God bless you. God bless you too.